to you and welcome to the Now Detroit. We begin with the heart-wrenching testimony from victims of Dr. Larry Nasser speaking out about how he changed their lives forever. Yeah, the convicted sex offender pleaded guilty to seven counts of using his position as a doctor to molest girls. And today he's hearing directly from his victims in court. The Now's Brian Abel was there for the emotional testimony. We want to warn you that some of what you are about to hear is graphic. Brian had to be difficult for these brave women to face their abuser today. Absolutely, it was difficult. It was difficult for everybody that was listening to this testimony. It was frankly heartbreaking to hear lives upended by a doctor that they trusted and were told to trust as well. And it was the first testimony from the very first victim today that really set the tone for what is expected to be a very emotional week of testimony. Take a listen. I'm addressing you publicly today as a final step and statement to myself that I have nothing to be ashamed of. Kyle Stevens says she was just six years old when her family's friend Larry Nasser started sexually abusing her. Let me remind you of the interests of a six-year-old girl. My favorite TV show was Clifford the Big Red Dog and my favorite book was Junie B. Jones. I could not do a multiplication problem and still had not lost all my baby teeth. The abuse started with Nasser exposing himself in his basement, then moved to masturbating, then rubbing her feet with his genitalia. Steven said he kept lotion in the basement. Without my knowledge or consent, I had engaged in my first sexual experience by kindergarten. I still get sick at the smell of that lotion. Steven said when she told her parents, they didn't believe her and brought Nasser to their home to talk. I listened to you tell me, no one should ever do that, and if they do, you should tell someone. Well, Larry, I'm here, not to tell someone, but to tell everyone. The experience and Stephen's parents believing Nasser over her caused deep psychological and health issues and a rift in the family. Her father would ask her to apologize again to Nasser right as Stevens was about to go to college. When she again stood by her story, he finally believed her despite how much Nasser damaged her. I hurt worse as I watched my father realize what he had put me through. My father and I did our best to patch up our tattered relationship before he committed suicide in 2016. Stevens ended her statement telling Nasser directly that using her body for sexual gratification for six years is unforgivable. Perhaps you have figured it out by now, but little girls don't stay little forever. They grow into strong women that return to destroy your world. So it's just very emotional. That was just one testimony out of what's expected to be more than 98 victims or parents of victims that we are expected to hear, including what might be some U.S. gold or at least medal recipients from the gymnastics team that might be expected throughout the week. Carolyn? Oh, just gripping testimony that we heard from that one young lady who, who lost her father to suicide. Brian, were there any representatives from Michigan State University in that courtroom today? There were not. And coming up tonight at 5 on 7 Action News, we actually hear from more victims of Larry Nassar, as well as one who says that MSU was complicit in this, and she directly addresses their absence in the courtroom today. Certainly a lot of people watching this case really all across the nation. Thank you so much, Brian, for the live report. Joanne.